Now, at this point, it looks like it's just a notice of appeal. But Ed, any hints, any clue as to what the grounds could be when, as you say, the judge in the case so thoroughly rejected the government's argument before? It's very unclear. As you say, the, the, the information that's come out from the DOJ is extremely limited in scope right now. Uh, normally, in, in a merger appeal, or normally actually in any kind of appeal on this, this corporate litigation, you would be given leave to appeal if you found material new evidence, if there was something that you, had, you felt was pertinent to the case that you had not been able to present at trial. But that wasn't the case. There was, nothing, there was nothing that the DOJ found after the trial or during the trial that they weren't able to present. This was a deal that had been almost two years in the making by the time it was finally nodded through by the judge. So I don't know what justice have that they feel you know, they, is going to get them back on the table here. It may just be as simple as they think the decision was unjust. They think Judge Richard Leon was perhaps too harsh in the way he, uh, he, he sided with the companies. But it's very unclear. They haven't given any information yet as to what they're going to do, but I'm sure they will have to in the coming days because Absolutely. this is not going to be something that goes unnoticed in the market. And, and by, by bankers working on different deals. Let's bring in now David McLaughlin, who is our DOJ and FTC reporter and CFIUS reporter in Washington. David, um, as Ed mentioned, this was a complete surprise that the Justice Department uh, is now appealing this decision when, in fact, it is a done deal. The, the Time Warner shares don't even trade anymore. To, to undo something like this would be incredibly complex. Do we have any sense of uh, what the DOJ is protesting specifically? Uh, no, as you said, uh, the only thing that's been filed so far is a notice of appeal. We may not see their reasoning um, behind, the dis behind the appeal for, for quite a while. Um, so we'll have to wait for that. I think there was some indication, uh, as you said, you know, appealing this and reversing this decision would be very complicated. There was some indication, though, that DOJ was going to make this move because when AT&T and Time Warner closed, they they agreed to keep uh, the two companies effectively separate for the uh, to give DOJ the chance to 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 appeal, and if they win, then that would be sort of easier to unscramble the deal. Can you recall, though, another uh, instance, David, when we saw this kind of situation with justice appealing a decision in a case where the deal was already closed? No. Uh, the last number of appeals that have, been by, have, that have been challenged by the Justice Department and the FTC, the government has won. Um, and so in that case, when, when that happens, the deals fall apart and they go their separate ways. We did see one appeal last year by two insurance companies, Anthem and Cigna. Uh, they lost the trial court. They appealed and lost there as well. Uh, so this is, a, this is extremely rare. Ed, I, I want to bring you back in here for a final question. Is the issue that the DOJ had against the AT&T Time Warner uh, merger their discomfort with a vertical merger, which, which would be a little bit unprecedented, or was it with the players involved, AT&T or more specifically Time Warner? Do we know? Well, that was always the speculation, Scarlett, that, that essentially Time Warner and therefore CNN, if you look at it that way, was something that Trump really didn't like and he didn't want to see that merger go through. He actually said on the campaign trail, if he was elected, the deal would be blocked. So there was always the specter of that in the background. But no, actually, this was the DOJ. They came out, they said, yes, it was a vertical merger, but they felt it presented an unfair competitive challenge in the environment. Why are they going after it again now? It's unclear. All I would say is that they didn't just lose the case. They lost as comprehensively as it's possible to lose. There were no real concessions. None of the things that they asked for, they got. And, and Judge Richard Leon, as I said earlier, he really castigated them and said this was a case that shouldn't have been brought and there was really no merit in it at all.